I want to uh, welcome all of you and uh, want to say a special greeting to everyone who worked in the Ruth Spurrier uh, Christmas sale. We, just this past week, uh, you, through your church, uh, represented uh, and helped uh, touch the lives of a lot of children. I was talking to uh, Janine Dawson uh, earlier this week and she said one of the things that happened there was that a young lady said, why are you all doing this? And uh, she said, well, because we love you. And she said, well, you don't even know me. And she said, I don't have to love you. God loves you, and God loves me the same way. So we're sisters. And said her face just lit up. A life was changed that day, and that's what the vision of this church is. This is a place where lives can be changed, where hurts are healed, and hope can be restored, and where loneliness can be relieved, and where everybody feels needed and wanted. And we're so grateful that you're here today. Um, our ushers are getting ready to bring the attendance pads down, so let them do that. We thank you for the information that you provide us there. And go ahead and fill that out, pass it down your row to the person next to you, and just keep going. And when it gets to the end, pass it back and make sure that you know everybody on your row. Friends, it's a great day to be in the house of the Lord. So let's prepare our hearts now to worship together.
We're gonna worship Christ the King. We're gonna worship Christ the King. We're gonna worship Christ the King and crown him Lord of everything. We're gonna worship. We're gonna worship. Now we're gonna worship Christ the King and crown him the Lord of everything. Lift up your hands, O ye gates. Lift up your everlasting doors. Lift up your hands and say Amen. The King of glory will come in. Now bring all your offerings to the King. Bring all your offerings to the King. Bring all your offerings to the King. And pray He will bless the gifts we bring. Oh, lift up. Oh, lift up. Lift up and say Amen. The King of glory will come in. The King of glory will come in. And then we'll rise up and praise Christ the King. Crown him Lord everything. We're gonna crown him Lord. Lord of all. Crown him Lord of all. How about that for an amen? amen. <laughs> it is great to be here in the house of the Lord. And today, we celebrate a new year. Celebrate a new year. We're celebrating the end of the Christian year today. So next week, we start Advent, the beginning of our calendar year for the Christian faith. So today, we were rejoicing and we're celebrating Christ the King. Will you stand with me as we sing our opening hymn, hymn number 715. 715, the Rejoice the Lord is King.
for our responsive call to worship. I'll read the, the light print if you will respond with the bold print. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? He is the Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord God Almighty. He is the King of glory. Once again, I want to welcome all of you to First United Methodist Church. We are glad you're here. And it's good to glorify the Lord as we connect people to Jesus Christ through spiritual nourishment and dynamic outreach. That's the mission of our church, and we're glad to celebrate and be a part of that. I want to invite you to get out your bulletin for a second and check out a couple of announcements while I'm thinking about it. The United Methodist Women Executive Committee, you all have a meeting tomorrow at 10 o'clock, and I don't want to forget to announce that, and that'll be a uh, meet at the Todd House. So... 10 o'clock tomorrow for the United Methodist uh, Executive Committee. Other great things happening. This Wednesday is our Go Forth Wednesday. If you've been around the sanctuary, around the worship center, you've noticed it's beginning to look a little like Christmas. And uh, I want to thank Wanda for great work on that. Wow, the tree is beautiful outside. And uh, just everything's looking great. But it's going to get better and better as we all come together Wednesday night for our Hanging of the Greens. And uh, we'll start serving dinner around 5 o'clock. So come on a little early, enjoy some fellowship, and uh, make it a great evening. It's a good time of worship. We'll sing Christmas carols, and it'll be a special, special time. So come on and join us. The weather's going to be great, and uh, it'll be a good night to be together. Also notice in your bulletin several other things happening. Triple L's taking a shopping trip Thursday. Uh, the Empty Nesters are meeting Thursday night. Uh, Anna's friends are going on a trip on Saturday, so lots of good things. And don't forget the Frosty 5K uh, this next Sunday, which uh, certainly does support our Honduras mission and the Frankfurt Medical Mission here in town. And so we want to encourage you to go ahead and sign up for that. Even if you're not going to run, go ahead and sign up. Make that donation, and uh, it's a great thing. And sign up for the First United Methodist Church team. Um, so that'll be good as well. Anyway, check out all the announcements that are happening in your bulletin. There's also a form there to donate a poinsettia for the Christmas season. Feel free to do that. Check out everything that's happening. Take your bulletin home and be a part of all the activities here at First United Methodist Church. You know, friends, there's a lot to pray about in our world today. And so I want to invite you now to join me as we go to the Lord in prayer. Holy and mighty God, we gather in this place today and humble ourselves before you, recognizing that you are our King. You are our Lord. You are the provider of all that we have and dream of being today. We thank you for your blessings upon blessings that are poured out upon our lives. And we've spent the last week or so giving thanks. But we recognize, Lord, that giving thanks to you is something we should do with every breath we breathe, with every step we take. 
Today, Holy One, as we worship in this place, we have humbly approached your throne, acknowledging that we're not, we're not always what you want us to be. We seek repentance and forgiveness of our sins, Holy God. And we thank you for your mercy, for your grace, and for your gift that restores us to a perfect relationship with you. We love you, Lord, and we thank you that as we pray, you called upon us to bear our burdens. And we share today among ourselves and our hearts the, the hurting and the sick. Some in this room this week will have surgery. And we're praying for them already. We're praying, Lord, that your guidance, your divine guidance, will touch doctors and nurses. And that through them, your divine healing will be revealed. We believe, O oh Lord, that through Christ, we have a great healer and a great physician. We pray for those who grieve in these days. These holidays bring out that, those feelings of, of hurt and pain. And yet you are our comforter. You are the one who fills the void in our lives with the abundant love and grace. And Lord, we pray too for ourselves as we are all in the midst of decision making. Every day we make decisions that affect our lives. And so we pray that you'd give us the gift of wisdom. Bestow, upon, bestow it upon us, Holy God, that we might, through our decisions, reflect your will and your ways. Now, Lord, as we worship in this time together, we thank you for this church and all churches across the land, that together we may be instruments of your good news to proclaim the glory of the Lord. And as we do, Lord, we pray for our, our nation, our community, and our world. And for its leaders, we pray that you will touch their lives and give them what they need to follow your guidance as they, as they lead. Lord, bless us now in this worship and guide us as we join our voices and our hearts and we pray together the prayer. The very prayer that you taught your own disciples to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive our trespasses, and lead us not to temptation. But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of God. Amen. Amen. I want to invite our children to come forward. <coughs> Good morning. Come on, Leah. Today we're talking about Christ the King. Did you hear the singers? They sang Christ the King. Did you hear that? Today is Christ the King Sunday, and as you heard Mr. David say a minute ago, it's the end of the Christian year. Now next week is Advent. It starts Advent, and that's the season where we're getting ready for, yes, Christmas. That's right. <coughs> so that's an exciting time next week. But before we get there, we've got to do today. And uh, we've got to think about a king. What, tell me, when you think of a king, what do you think about? What's a king wear, for instance? A crown, yeah. What's a crown look like? Shiny. Is it kind of like that crown? Yeah, kind of like that one? Has the sharp points on it like that? Yeah. Okay, what else might a, might a king wear? A robe, yeah, yeah, okay, what else? Might have neck, beautiful jewelry, maybe big rings, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, tell me again. British shoes, okay, yeah. 
Might ride in a chariot or a fancy car, right? And rear rings, might, absolutely, you never know. Yeah. Well, you know, we talk about Christ. Now, who is Christ? Christ is what's it, Jesus, and we call him the king. But I don't remember Christ wearing a crown that looked like that, do you? And I don't think he wore big rings and lots of jewelry. And he did have a robe on, but it was kind of a simple robe, right? Everybody wore a robe back then. But Christ never sat in a, lived in a palace, did he? No. And he didn't have a throne in which he sat. So why is it we call him the king? Because he's God and what? He didn't need what we could offer. That's right. He was Christ. And he's Jesus. And he offered to us. He, was, he served us instead of us being the servants of the king. Christ came and he served us and he gave us his love and his perfect forgiveness. It's a special day and I want your families to talk to you about what it means for Christ to be our king. I'm going to talk to them about that today. You all have a very special time with Miss Tanya today. She's going to do little church and that's going to be a good experience as well. Well, let's pray before you go. Can we do that? Dear God, we thank you for your love and your grace and mercy upon our lives. And we thank you for these beautiful children. Bless them and bless their families. And bless us as a church family as we nurture them. Thank you this day, O oh Lord, for your son Jesus Christ and his perfect love for us. Bless us now. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, you can go with Miss Tanya there if you'd like. The rest of us, let's stand and let's sing together. Number 176, Majesty. Worship His Majesty. <laughs> scriptures, I want to invite you to get out a pew Bible. You might want that today. Look around, find one down there. Sometimes they're down real low. Look around. I don't know if there's some in the balcony there. Today we're, we're going to look at three different scriptures. Uh, they're kind of lengthy, so I wanted you to have this for a reference. The first one is in Jeremiah 23, uh, page 670 in your pew Bible. I'll make it easy for you. 670. 670. This is Jeremiah chapter 23, beginning at the first verse. I'll give you just a second there to find that. Jeremiah 23, <coughs> beginning at verse 1. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people, it is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. 
And then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock and out of all the lands where I have driven them and I will bring them back to their fold and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I'll raise up for David a righteous branch. And he shall reign as king and deal wisely and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. And in his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which we, he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. All right, let's turn to another text in the New Testament on page 1026. We're looking at Colossians chapter 1, beginning at the 11th verse. Colossians 1, beginning at verse 11. <coughs> May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power. And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, things visible and invisible, uh, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God is pleased to dwell. And through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. The last scripture today is the gospel lesson found in the book of Luke in chapter 23. And I want to invite you to stand as we share in the reading of the Gospel lesson. This is Luke chapter 23, beginning at verse 33. Luke 23, beginning at verse 33. When they came to the place that was called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you're king of the Jews, then save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who was hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him saying, Do you not fear God? Since you are under the same sentence of condemnation. And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And then, said, then he said to Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Be seated. <clears throat> As 
As I read that gospel lesson, I saw some of your faces. Some of you were looking at me like, he's in the wrong chapter. <laughs> <laughs> it does seem a little out of place. I mean, the Sunday before Advent, and three days after Thanksgiving. And here we are talking about the crucifixion of Jesus. That's more of a Good Friday text, we think. Not the kind of text that we want to see on Christ the King Sunday. Or is it? You know, Jesus came, as I told the children, as a different kind of king. Not the kind that most people thought of. There's a wonderful poem by an anonymous writer that says it well. It's titled, They Missed Him. Listen to this. They were looking for a lion. He came as a lamb. And they missed him. They were looking for a warrior. He came as a peacemaker and they missed him. They were looking for a king. He came as a servant and they missed him. They were looking, looking for liberation from Rome. He submitted to the Roman stake and they missed him. They were looking for a fit to their mold. He was the mold maker. And they missed him. My family, when we submit to the lamb, we'll meet the lion. Join the peacemaker, and we'll meet the warrior. Work with the servant, and we will meet the king. Walk with the submitted, and we will meet the liberator. You know, friends, if Jesus is not fitting into the mold that we have made for ourselves, then maybe we need to come to the mold maker and we need to get a new one. Submit to God's plan for our life and we'll see the need for, eternal, uh, for, for the eternal met first. And then all the other things that we need will come into place. They missed Him. People saw Christ through their own eyes and they missed Him. They wanted that warrior, and he came as a king of peace. They wanted that lion, and he came as a lamb. Jesus was not the kind of king that most people thought. He came as a suffering king, and many missed him. And so I think our scripture for today is appropriate, if you will, because Jesus came as a suffering Messiah, and they missed him. All of our scripture lessons this morning... They speak of this king whom many missed. In our lesson from Jeremiah, it says the kingdom of God is described in terms of justice and righteousness. This kingdom is described as something different than usual, something different than the world was used to be. If you look in Isaiah 61, verse 1, and following, the kingdom of God is described this way. It says, He has chosen me and sent me to bring good news to the poor. To heal the brokenhearted, to announce release to the captives and freedom to those in prison. He has sent me to proclaim that the time has come when the Lord will save his people. Or as Jesus himself said in Mark 1 verse 15, the, time, the right time has come and the kingdom of God is near. Turn away from your sins and believe the good news. My family, the kingdom of God, which broke into this world through Christ, brought a different order to life. In other words, the broken and the hungry and the poor, they were released from their brokenness. And the burden now rested on those who were blessed. They were to be fair. They were to live with justice and righteousness all their days. You see, friends, this radical kingdom of God was brought to earth by Christ, and it's now carried on through His body, the church, you and me. The Apostle Paul reminds the Colossians of that. He said, He is the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything He might have first place. Through Christ, the visible part of the body of Christ is manifested through you, through you and you, and through all of you and me. And me. Luke 17 says, Do not say, Look, here it is, or there it is. 
Because the kingdom of God is within you, among you. My family, do we really hear that text, that scripture? You know, the kingdom of God, the rule of Christ as the king of kings, comes to bring justice and righteousness into the world. And we are to bring that justice and righteousness into this world because we are the body of Christ. Think about for a moment, friends, what a huge responsibility that is. Because we represent Christ's justice and righteousness. Not the justice and righteousness that we design. Hello? Why do we do that? Well, it's because, friends, Christ lives within us as we are the body of Christ, the church. What does it mean to do this? What does it mean to bring justice and righteousness into the world? Could it mean that we are to feed the hungry? Could it mean that we are to visit the, the lonely? We are to visit the imprisoned? Could it be that we are to operate in a way that brings the peace of Christ into the brokenness of this world? And God knows it means that. And not only are we to bring justice and righteousness into the world, but friends, we are to worship. And we are to praise God as we are the body of Christ, the church. Think, listen to this. We have responsibility to worship, to praise, to bow, to bend our knees in honor and respect of the King of Kings. Now I'm about to say something you may never have heard before. But worship is a duty. A right and a privilege for every one of us. David, if that's the case, then where are the multitudes? You know, why, can't, why shouldn't we have to build this place twice, three times as big as it is, to accommodate all those who would come out of duty to worship the Lord? But many see this time as useless and unneeded. Why worship? Why sing the old songs? Why follow the, 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 the custom of the early church? Why? Well, because, honestly, we're commanded. We are duty-bound to worship this King. Worship is a form of love. And Jesus said that we were to love the Lord our God with all our heart, our soul, and our mind. Right? Let me explain it this way. There was a sheep herder out in the mountains in Idaho. And he loved, he lived by himself, and he loved to play the violin. But suddenly, over time, he realized his violin had gotten out of tune. And he couldn't get it back the way he knew it needed to be to make beautiful music. Now, this sheep herder also loved to listen to the radio, a radio station in California. And so he wrote them, and he asked them that if they could, at a certain hour, a certain moment, a certain day, if they could stop everything and just play that note so that he could retune his violin. And they did it. They stopped everything. They silenced all the other sounds in that moment, and they struck the note. And in that sh shepherd's hut in the distant mountain, the shepherd heard that sound. And from that single note, he was able to put his instrument back in tune. My family, that's the way it is in our worship. A special time of being in touch with God. To silence the noise of our busy, stressful lives. And to listen to the signal tone that God strikes for our lives. To, to hear the pitch that God gives by which our hearts can be put in tune. Worship is a time, my family, for us to get in tune with Christ and then to go and serve others as Christ would have us to do. And that brings us then to the gospel lesson, the story of Jesus' death. What a better way than the scripture that we read today to see the truly radical nature of Christ's kingship and the cross. The cross. Who else does this cross stand for? Does that stand for Phil Hill? No. Nope. Does it stand for David Goins? No. 
Does it stand for Billy Graham? There's only one, one, that this cross truly stands for. Think about that. What a better way to see the suffering nature of our King. What a better way to see the truly radical nature of the gospel message than through the cross. The cross is the sign and the symbol of Christ the King. And here on this cross, in his conversation with that convicted criminal, we see the kingdom in action. We see the suffering servant, Jesus Christ, bringing the good news, the gospel, this, to this convicted criminal in all of his splendor. To that perpetrator, friends, Jesus and his justice and his justice and righteousness, he was declaring him not guilty as he repented of his sin. Jesus was with him in the suffering, and so Jesus was also a victim. Jesus was suffering for you and me. So Christ and this perpetrator both received a great victory that day when the man said, and we indeed have been condemned justly for we're getting what we deserve for our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. That was his act of repentance. He knew he'd done wrong. He was sorry. And then, because of his repentance, he saw Christ for who he was, and he pleaded, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered, saying, Truly I say to you, today, not, well, maybe tomorrow, or let me think about it. Today, you will be with me in paradise. In answering the man, Jesus was relieving him of his guilt. This kingdom of God should cause all of us, all of creation, to examine themselves. And then repentance comes. And Jesus is there to declare the person not guilty. Because Christ the King has already paid the penalty of our wrongs through his broken body and his blood shed on this cross. Shouldn't we want to glorify the Lord? Shouldn't we? But our culture today is so much more interested in glorifying ourselves and serving a lowly more, serving the lowly. We're more interested in feeling good than worshiping a God who, demand, who, who reminds us of our brokenness as He dies on the cross. Aren't we more interested in a bed of roses than we are a, a crown of thorns? Jesus is a different kind of king. A king who died on the cross and then rose so that we might have life eternal. And so we see not only the suffering of the cross, but friends, listen, we see the victory. We see the victory for all of us as well. We do see the victory of the Christ. As he says to that criminal, truly I say, today you will be with me. In paradise. My family, listen. There's victory right here. Victory for us in Christ. On this Christ the King Sunday. I pray that we'll be able to celebrate Christ. As a different kind of King. Pray with me, will you? Loving God. We put our whole trust in you. And our faith is overwhelmed by the knowledge that you are sovereign. And you truly are the King of kings. We forgive us, O oh Lord, when we look to others as our King. And may the newness of hope and victory that we can find through the cross of Christ. May we discover once again with ever, with, I don't know, ever loving newness, may we discover that perfect relationship that you desire with all of us. We love you, holy God. And we thank you for your tender blessing. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. As we celebrate this radical kingship, our ushers are preparing to come forward and let's prepare ourselves now. 
to offer our gifts and our tithes to Almighty God. Mighty and holy God, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to offer of ourselves in generous generosity and in sacrificial giving what you have already provided. Receive these gifts, bless them, and bless the giver, and use it for the glory of your kingdom and the work of the church. Amen.
closing hymn is hymn number 155, verses 1 and 2 of All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. Jesus Christ upon our lives. Go with us as we share the good news and the message of Christ. And may your peace that passes all understanding abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you and greet one another before you go.